Welcome to the IT Shed. In this video, we're going to look at CS50's introduction program in Python, problem set 3, Philippe Stikira. Now, I'm not sure if I pronounced that right, but however. So, in this program, it starts by giving us the dictionary. And this dictionary contains food items, which are the key, and the price of these items, which is the value separated by colon. So we're to implement a program that enables a user to place an order and it's going to prompt them for items one per line until the user inputs control D and that's a way of stopping the program. After each inputted item we could display the total cost of all the items inputted thus far and we're going to prefix a dollar sign to that and format it to two decimal places. As usual we'll treat the user input case insensitively, meaning that it'll work whether they input the item in lowercase or uppercase or title case. And we're going to ignore any input that isn't an item and it's not in our dictionary. So we're going to check it's in our dictionary. If it's not in dictionary, we're going to ignore it. So here's the demo putting in the items. This item is not in the dictionary. So it's going to be ignored. And then it's going to print the total when we're finished after the user but it's control D is going to print the total. So we're going to make our directory, we're going to cd into the directory, and then we're going to code our name of our program.py. And then we'll submit it to CS50 just to check it. We'll check CS50 just to see if we get the green smiley faces. That means our program will be right. Okay, off we go. Okay, let's look at our to-do list. So we're going to create a dictionary to hold the food and the prices. We're going to take input from the user. We're going to see. We're going to check to see if the food is in the dictionary. If it is, then we'll update and print the total to two decimal places. If it's not, we're going to reprompt. So ignore it and reprompt. And at all times, we're going to listen for control plus D. That's the end of the program. So they do actually give us the dictionary, but it's in the text here. So we're just going to copy it. I'm going to paste it in here. It saved me writing it. Now, so we have the dictionary, so we're going to have to assign that to a variable. So I'm just going to create a variable called food and assign the dictionary to it. That's the first thing done. Next we're going to take input from the user. So I'm going to create another variable I'm going to call it choice. The user's choice. And assign that to input. And what do I want us to do here? Item, okay, so input item. And remember, it's supposed to be case insensitively, and it's in our dictionary as a title case. And title case is the first letter of each word is capitalized. So remember, if our user types in a lowercase or an uppercase item, then when it searches the dictionary, it won't be in it. So we need to convert the, whatever the user types into title case so that it'll be found in the dictionary. So again, we do that with Python's built-in function dot title. So now we're going to check to see if the food is in the dictionary. We're going to want to keep prompting the user the whole time without him having to start and restart the program. So we're going to use a while loop. So I'm going to say while true. We're going to have to move our choice input statement down into the while loop. So how are we going to check whether it's in the dictionary? So we're going to use an if statement. So if choice in food. Then if it is in food, we're going to have to update the price here 
of the particular food into a new variable that we're going to name total. We're going to keep updating that. So I'll first create it here and assign it to zero. Just initialize it. So we're going to update total the food choice. Now the statement is checking whether choice is in food, so whether our user input, for instance taco, is in our dictionary food. So it's going to search through here looking for taco. If it is, then food choice, which is the key, that is our key. So when we access our key, we're actually printing the value. So food choice is going to be updated, which is $3, it's going to be updated to total. And remember this is a loop. So the user is going to put more input in and it's going to keep checking. And if it is, it's going to keep appending the, the price of the food to total. Let's have a look here in an example. So I'm going to do a print statement inside the loop. So print total. I'll run the program. So for instance, item is up displayed to the user. So we'll look at taco. $3. Now bowl. So 11.50, so three dollars for taco, and bold is 8.50, so it's appended as total, which is 11.50. Now say taco again, 14.50. So the program is working. Now we'll take this opportunity to check here that one of our requirements is to make sure that the total is printed to two decimal places. As you can see here, it's only one decimal place. So that's what we're going to do now next. So in order to format it to two decimal places, I just did a bit of Googling and I came across this website, sparkbyexamples.com. So it says here you can use the format string curly braces colon dot 2f, where the 2 specifies the number of decimal points and the f indicates that the argument should be formatted as a float. So here's an example that they have. They've used a variable formatted number and this is the text they use. I'm just going to copy this and bring it over to my code. So I'm just going to paste it in here. I'm going to create a new variable. Called format a total. And instead of the argument num, I'm going to put in our total. As an argument into the function dot format. So we're just going to take the opportunity to put in a dollar sign here because we need a dollar sign as part of our program. So let's try that. Let's try running formatted total. So we go again with item taco. Okay, now you see we have it to the two decimal places. Okay, it's working so far, and we have our dollar sign. Perfect. Now I'm going to move my print statement back under the if statement. Now remember, in CS50, they require us to print total to the screen, and then put the value of total, the total string, and then the value. So in order to do that, we're going to use an f string. Now an f string is a way of formatting our string so that we can incorporate text and a variable. So we use an F and then our inverted commas and write our string total and colon. And to bring in our variable, we're going to use curly braces. And close off our inverted commas. So that's our F string. So that'll print the string total plus the value contained within the variable total to our screen. Now, for more about f-strings, just do a quick Google. It's straightforward enough. It get your head around. You just need to put an f before the inverted commas and not after it. So let's try this again. Bowl. Okay, it works. We get the string total and we get the value of total. So next, we have to do the error handling. Remember, we have to keep an eye out for when the user um, hits Control D to stop the program. 
So I did a bit of Googling on Stack Overflow. I found a try and accept with an EOF error. So I'm just going to copy this. So before we do our try and accept, we're going to have to do some indentation. And we paste our accept in here. So we're going to have to close the program once the EOF error is encountered. So for that we're going to use sys.exit. So first we'll import sys up here. And sys is just a Python module. So let's run over our program one more time. We have an import statement where we're importing the sys module. That's used in sys.exit to close the program once a control D is encountered. And that's found using the accept EOF error. We have a try statement. We have a while loop which keeps looping looking for user input. So we have an if statement containing our variable choice which user inputs. And that's checking to see if it's in our dictionary called food. So if it is in our dictionary, then the key is found and the value is taken and put into the variable total. And that's updated the whole time the loop is running. We formatted this to two decimal places and added a dollar sign. And then we're printing it to the screen using an F statement with a string total and our variable formatted total, which is just again total with the two decimal places and the dollar sign. So now we'll just submit it to CS50 to check if it works. All greens, so we're good. So thanks for joining me in the video. And remember, this is just my version of the code. Other people's and your own may be different. Now, if anything you don't understand, just please leave it in the comments. Thank you, and I hope I'll see you in the next video.